Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming on such short notice this afternoon. My name is Trent Ferris. I'm the Public Information Officer at the York County Sheriff's Office. And today um, we have with us uh, Sheriff Bruce Bryant, 16th Solicitor, excuse me, 16th Circuit Solicitor, Kevin Brackett. It's a tongue twister, I'm sorry. And um, Special Agent in Charge, the FBI, John Strong. Uh, the reason we brought you here today for this press conference is that there's an update in the homicide investigation from October 23, 2014 at 5010 Tioga Road in Clover, South Carolina. On that day, York County Sheriff's deputies responded to a 911 call at that residence, and when deputies arrived, they found two people deceased with gunshot wounds. Those victims were Doug and Debbie London. Yesterday afternoon, January 29, uh, 2015, York County Sheriff's detectives Officers with the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department and agents with the FBI arrested and charged Malcolm Jarrell Hartley and Brianna Johnson with two counts of murder in this case. And because this investigation is still fluid and ongoing, there's going to be not so much we can tell you because of the com compromise in the investigation, but we just wanted to bring you here today to bring you up, on, up to speed on the investigation. Right now, I'm going to hand it off to Sheriff Bruce Bryant for a few remarks. And it will be a few remarks. Uh, first of all, thank y'all for being here. Uh, and second, there's, I can't even begin to thank uh, all the people that have been involved in this investigation. Uh, this has been one of the, probably the longest investigations we've conducted in quite some time. And I'm just very, very grateful and thankful for the Charlotte Office of the FBI, Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, uh, you know, when we deal with the state line, it is just horrendous uh, how we go about doing our job and able to do our job, or it is just, it just makes for every kind of problem in the world. And if it wasn't for these people that would step up to the plate and work just as hard as we work uh, in regards to solving crime, then uh, I don't know where we would be. But we are very, very grateful that we've got a great relationship with our uh, partners across the, the state line and county lines uh, here in York County. And uh, that being said, again, I want to say thank you to the FBI in Charlotte uh, and to Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. And I also uh, would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to Captain Jerry Hoffman and the investigators with the York County Sheriff's Office. They've all worked hard, and uh, we're very, very glad that we are bringing this to a head, and, and we're going to have uh, a conclusion on this. That being said, I'm going to turn it over to Solicitor Kevin Brackett. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff. I, I just want to take a second to reiterate uh, what he said. I've been involved in the investigation since day one. I was at the crime scene with the Sheriff and, and the investigators, and I, I, I can't impress upon the public just how hard the, the investigative team in this case, uh, both with the Sheriff's Office here in Charlotte, but the FBI, everybody has really worked together. This has been a team effort, uh, and I cannot tell you how impressed I am with, with just the, the level of commitment and, and, and all the hours of hard work that's gone in getting us to where we are today. Um, I understand, uh, I've spoken to the District Attorney's Office in Charlotte, and I want to commend them as well. I've been working personally with District Attorney Andrew Murray up in Charlotte, and their office has been very, very helpful and cooperative. Uh, they've been an outstanding resource for us as well. Uh, they informed me uh, just moments ago that, that uh, Bond uh, was denied on the fugitive warrant that uh, one of these defendants is being held on up there. Uh, extradition uh, proceedings will be instituted and we will try to get uh, that individual down to South Carolina just as quickly as we can. But, uh, of course, I, I uh, always have to remind everybody that these individuals are charged with crimes. They are, of course, presumed innocent. And I look forward to the opportunity to take these cases to court uh, to, uh, to be able to be on a reasonable doubt. The outstanding work that, uh, that's been done by the investigative team in this case uh, is certainly a meaningful job in that regard. I don't have anything further. Yes, sir. Here we go. Well, like I said, we can only answer limited <coughs> questions, so we'll take a few questions right now if you have any. Can you talk at all about what uh, you Sorry, Andrew, 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 sorry. Uh, First of all, uh, I want to make certain that we're clear. Uh, you mentioned Charlotte four different times. Are the persons from Charlotte, and are you going to prosecute them in York County General Sessions Court and not United States District Court? The 
warrants that have been obtained in this case are from the state of South Carolina, Fulton County, and the prosecutor in Fulton County in a joint cooperative. This has been a cooperative effort from the beginning. We will continue to cooperate with all the partners involved in this case. It's a, as, as the sheriff indicated, it's an ongoing investigation. We are glad to be here. What is the relationship between these two individuals? We, we, we're not going to go into relationships, who's connected to who. Uh, again, this is an ongoing investigation and uh, we are far from being through with it. Uh, so we're not going to start talking about relationships and who was who and how certain people knew each other and that type of stuff. We just need to stay away from that for another few days, but uh, that information will be coming. Can you, I'm sorry, can you talk at all about a possible motive and if these people are connected to the robbery that happened last year regarding this couple? Well, it'd be difficult to do. Hans, I know these questions uh, are of concern to the public in, insofar as uh, the people that live out where the Londons lived are concerned about their safety. And, and of course, the general community wants to know, is this a random act of violence that just happened? It was not a random act of violence. It was connected to another crime. That much we can tell you. So uh, we feel safe in telling the public that uh, with the apprehension of these folks and the ongoing investigation of where we're going, we feel very good about uh, uh, where we're at. But I can't specifically get into much more detail. I'm sorry. I didn't want to know what this was. Mr. Brackett or Mr. Strong, could you say why the FBI is involved in this? Sure. Uh, and Mrs. London, obviously, uh, it's been well documented in, in the media, uh, were victims of a Hobbs Act robbery uh, of their master store, uh, which we are uh, an investigating agency on, and, and there have been individuals charged with that Hobbs Act robbery in the, in the Western District of North Carolina in federal court. Uh, obviously, with them becoming victims of this horrendous act, there was a logical connection that we become involved and share the information that we have and look for connections between the two matters, and that's why we're involved. And that's interstate commerce? It's the Hobbs Act robbery, yes. That's uh, interference uh, with uh, interstate commerce uh, through armed uh, action. All right, thank you, Strong, if, if I may. Uh, you just mentioned the, that robbery in Charlotte on May 25th. Three individuals were charged in that crime. Two of those uh, were jailed and remain in jail and were indicted last uh, in November in the Western District. A third person uh, was indicted last week in uh, federal charges and was jailed. He also uh, pleaded guilty in state court in North Carolina last year on the same charge. Is there a connection between the jailing of David Lee Fudge on the indictment issued last week in the Western District and the homicides in Lake White. Well, Mr. Fudge was jailed in relation to the Hobbs Act robbery. We're still investigating if there's any relation, uh, investigating the relationship between anything that occurred relating to that Hobbs Act robbery and the murder of the London. That's still ongoing and I can't really comment any further than that. If, if you can't describe relationships can you say where these two suspects are from are they from charlotte or from here sure they're, they're from charlotte they are they're, if i'm not mistaken with that's them. Good. concord but concord and charlotte yeah. uh, we provide those arrest warrants with the dates of birth and addresses and that kind of thing before we need to take them if i'm not mistaken one of those warrants has not been served is that it's correct captain said we'll say it hasn't been served. but once they're all the warrants are served we'll send them out there and we've only got time for two more questions, okay? I have one, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the uh, federal documents filed uh, on Wednesday in the U.S. Attorney's Office state that uh, Mr. Fudge is, in his words, an admitted member of the Bloods gang. And the government alleges that he's, he, he is a high-ranking member. Can you say if there's any uh, connection between the Bloods gang and what happened in Lake White? We really can't comment on that. That is a part of the investigation, determining who's affiliated with whom, what's related to what. Okay. Last question over here. 
Jen. It's a uh, logistical question, okay. so I'll there, Mom. Okay. pass to someone else. Last one. I'll one pass more. to Andrew. Okay, Andrew, go. Was the uh, murder weapon or weapons recovered, and what type were they if they were? That's part of the investigation. We probably can't get into that right now. Okay. We want to these guys. I have I have all the spellings. I'll be sending out a press release here with everything on it. Uh, as soon as I leave here and get back down to the office. Uh, we do have mug shots of the suspects over here. Uh, I'll be handing those out. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you coming. Thank you.